It's going to take a fine balancing act to better support displaced workers here in Singapore while helping them to bounce back into a job. Manpower Minister Tan Si Leng says that the goal is to ensure the measures are tailored for those who need it the most without inadvertently causing them to lose other types of benefits. Dr Tan was speaking earlier on News Tonight and he told my colleague Glenda Chong more about the upcoming policy changes that we can expect. We had quite a number of forward Singapore discussions thus far and um, we've been able to reach out to people from all walks of life. Uh, we've also reached out to uh, PMEs, the one that we have this um, afternoon. Mm. Um, we had uh, high potential leaders, people from pretty much all walks of life and businesses as well. Um, thus far, these are early days, but we find consistently two themes have come out. One of the themes is about um, having opportunities for everyone. Opportunities to continue at every single stage of their lives, mm. you know, for them to have to be given fair consideration, for them to be able to upskill, to reskill themselves, and to just make sure that um, they stay ahead and they stay abreast of, of all the developments, all the disruptions and the accelerating change. The second theme revolves around reassurances or assurances to, to ensure that at every single step of the way, should there be curveballs thrown at them, um, they have the ability to bounce back. So it has to do with upskilling, reskilling. So we, we find that um, because of, of this um, conversations and the dialogues that we've been having with them, there is also consensus that has been forged about the fact that all parties have to do their part. Um, the workers themselves, the employees, have to commit themselves to want to um, pivot, to want to transform, to want to upskill, to want to put in the efforts to reskill themselves and keep up to date. The companies would also need to therefore have to invest and commit resources to invest in training to ensure that um, consistently these workers continue to be in tune and continue to, be, to, to, to sort of stay on top of their craft. And of course, from the government's perspective, it's a matter of how we support them, investing in people, making sure that they are always ready, and walking every step with them, including even helping them to understand what are some of the preemptive industry trends, what are the early developments that's happening, and where the new areas in terms of growth and disruptions is happening. So it, 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 it's the kind of uh, social compact that brings us all together. Right, so saying that, what is the ministry's response to each of these ideas that mm. you know, you've just mentioned? What are perhaps some of the possible trade-offs or maybe challenges in getting them you know, implemented here? Well, as far as the social compact um, is concerned, we are also refreshing the social compact by having all these forward SG dialogues. Mm. And obviously, understanding their ideas, their concerns, their expectations, building on what previous conversations, previous national dialogues have, have actually gone through. We want to continue to tweak it, refine it, so that it's even more responsive and it's even more precise in terms of, of targeting some of these policy changes. Um, again, because the world is experiencing significant disruptions, both from geopolitical tensions, from inflationary pressures, from the, the, the Ukraine crisis, coming out from COVID, preparing for, for future black swans and so on, the economic cycles are getting shorter and shorter. And hence, because of the change that's accelerating, we needed to ensure that we equip uh, all of our population, our local talent, our local Singapore core, with the necessary skill sets, with the necessary tools for them to be able to compete globally, not just regionally, but globally. Now, because of the size of our population, because of the tremendous amount of opportunity and because of the disruptions, we've, we have to also contemporaneously bring in top-notch enterprises globally to, alongside with them the talent to pluck in those gaps that at this point in time exist. And we have got to then invest also significantly simultaneously into our own local people to help them upskill. So hence, all these new past creations about bringing the best talent to come and complement to help to develop our local Singapore core. So there is that, that understanding and, and people have come to understand why we needed to do that. Mm. I think that is important. Well, you know, your uh, recent manpower report also showed that local empl employment is at a high level. That mm. is good news. Mm. However, at the same time, yeah. there's also the report of impending recession. Yes. How concerned or worried are you about this? How prepared should we be? And then at the same time, how will this affect the forward SG discussion? Yeah. Well, Q3 
labor market advance really shows that um, we are we have eased a little bit in terms of our growth. So we're about 4.4% um, down. But the labor market for Q3 still shows a huge uh, jump in terms of the numbers, and and we are really at a uh, we've gone even above pre-COVID days in terms of our total employment figures. But we are also seeing some slight uptick in terms of retrenchments and also some potential job losses. And of course, I think everybody knows that the gloomy outlook in, in Europe, in other developed countries. So we're watching this situation very, very closely. Um, what we are doing is to exhort businesses to continue to focus on the longer term transformation, pivots um, on innovation, upskilling and digitalization. At our end, we also urge companies to really consider diversifying their non-resident workforce, focusing on building up the Singapore core, and in terms of investing in our people for the longer haul by making sure that um, they are reskilled, they are upskilled, and just making sure that we are focused on those trends that are focused on, on the growth part of, of the industry itself. For instance, like um, the green economy, green financing, renewables you know, in energy, um, in fintech, financial services in, in terms of AI, those are still very, very much sunrise areas. I think we should continue mm. to drive the economy in, in that sense itself to create better jobs for our people. For the other outward-facing export industry, I think that we'll see some slowdown. But fundamentally, over the longer haul, again, I think the, 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 the future is still bright and rosy. Well, you know, speaking of this retrenchment, you know, and how you're going to better support these um, displaced workers, mm -hmm. you mentioned that you're looking very carefully at this. We also know that the labour movement has been pushing for this unemployment income insurance. What is your ministry's stand on this? What considerations are there before implementing uh, such a system here? Oh, we look at it um, very closely and um, in a very, very um, carefully calibrated manner because this is a very fine balancing act. Early on in the dialogue, I also shared fairly extensively about this uh, unemployment support that we are looking at. One of the, the, the key things is that um, we, are, we, are, we are working with different um, components, different sector agencies within the government. We wanted to make sure that we don't inadvertently, as a result of implementing um, some form of support system, then end up like in other um, countries where you have welfare systems, mm. inevitably dropping them off certain other types of benefits. So we're very careful and um, we need time to ensure that the measures that we roll out will be balanced and at the same time, I think it will be very carefully calibrated and tailored for the people, the segments that need it the most, without at the same time causing them to, to, to lose other types of benefits because of the fact that this benefit comes onto them. Well, very, very quickly, we're running out of time, but yeah. you know, you mentioned all this. Are there any models on the table? Well, there are a couple of things that we're thinking of. Today, um, a lot of times when we don't roll it out, it's because of the fact that um, we needed to actually understand the, the overall broader landscape in terms of what are the impacts it would be on other uh, segments until um, we have carefully calculated, carefully calibrated all of the different impacts and so on. When we come out, we will roll it out in a very, very delicate, very balanced and very precise manner. Yeah. So I think wait for that space.